Um, I'd like to introduce um, Dr. Marcarina Dudley. Is She's a clinical neuropsychologist. She is a researcher and senior lecturer in clinical psychology and deputy director Māori for the Centre for Brain Research at the Auckland, the Auckland University. Um, she led the team that has developed the Māori assessment of neurophysiological abilities, mana, that's a big mouthful, a cognitive, functional and well-being screening tool for dementia in older Māori. So welcome, Makirena. Kura koutou, um, uh, ngā mahi ki a koutou, ko te rarawa te apauri pingati kahunga iwi, uh, ngō uh, uh, ko te rarawa, oh, sorry, uh, ko rangihiki te awa, ko manukau toku marae, uh, ko makarena rauru toku ingo ngā mahi. Um, so I'm just going to share my screen as well. So... <clears throat> Uh, like all um, psychometric tool, tools of this nature, um, we uh, usually have an, an, an acronym for them. Um, so uh, we have called this tool the Māori, uh, the MANA tool, which stands for the Māori Assessment of Neuropsychological Abilities. Um, it's not happening. Okay, so as Oliver has already mentioned, um, we base the mana tool, we developed the mana tool um, from the, the ground up, if you like, and, and because we wanted a tool that was um, obviously acceptable to kaumatua, to, uh, to our kaumatua. Um, so in order to do that, as Oliver's already explained, we did do a hikoi around the mutu uh, and, and talk to Kaumatua. Um, we were funded by the Health Research Council of New Zealand and we had two aims for that original study to investigate the Māori experiences and understandings of dementia and to develop a Māori free diagnostic tool to detect dementia. Now, my background is in neuropsychology. I don't actually, in fact, um, the opportunity, the neuropsych opportunity is known for decades that there is uh, cultural bias in these types of tools. So when it came about that um, it was realised there was cultural bias uh, in the detection of dementia in Māori in the current tools that were being used in Aotearoa, um, I was approached uh, to uh, potentially develop a tool that would be uh, culture, culturally feel, if you like, and I jumped at the opportunity because I as already stated I've seen over the years, practicing as a clinician, that there was this cultural bias inherent in the tool, inherent in the tools that we had um, that we had imported and and use uh, people. So I was really keen for that to do part of that. Um, so I've had a fantastic team of um, uh, uh, investigators working alongside me with Oliver Menzies and Garrett, who's a, uh, I think pretty really the only Māori biostatistician in the country, um, Professor Denise Walton, uh, Hinimoa Alder and Dame Nader Glavish has been our sort of support person all the way through. Uh, we've had to bring on, we did, we have brought on um, a special advisor group who are non-Māori um, and who are really keen and very excited about being part of uh, producing this tool. So I want to um, acknowledge Professor Lynette Tippett, who is probably one of the most senior neuropsychologists in the country, Gary Shong, uh, Professor Nari Kirst and Dr. Sarah Cullum, who are all experts um, uh, specialised in in people's health and um, in mate wari dementia in particular. Um, okay, so all the way through, we have had a strong Komatua uh, group, Rōpū, to guide us. And, you know, in any of the work that I do, I, I always run it past our Komatua first. And, and indeed, even before we started on this journey, I went north to to where I'm from and sought permission, if you like, from my co-mart to go ahead and proceed with this journey. And of course, you know, there was overwhelming support for it. And, and, and indeed, that's the um, 
that's the response that we've got from Komato all over the Mutu. So, um, and we have regularly consulted with our own uh, Komato work group comp comprising of Dame Nader Galabish, Matua Piripi Daniels, who has was a significant uh, person in the development of this tool. However, who sadly passed away two years ago. Dr. Wai would report Matua Sunny uh, Niha, Fire Dan McGregor, Fire Kahu Po, Nga Wai Rungo Hirwini, and Fire Mui Nong have all played a significant part in this. Um, on, as well as our uh, Komato Ropu, we have consulted with uh, other Komatua throughout the Mutu uh, on. Um, on the odd occasion, well, on quite frequent occasions actually. So we've brought them up to um, up to Auckland, Tamaki Makoto, got them to look at the tool before we sort of moved to the next step. So there was uh, ongoing consultation with uh, Komato groups from around the Mutu. Um, <clears throat> we uh, so uh, um, Oliver had 241. So yeah, 230 plus. Komata we interviewed from seven different regions. We wanted to try and get as much of a representation of iwi as, as is possible, given the resources that we had to work with. And um, yeah, more so Oliver's been through the rest of that. We did start up uh, in Kaitaia, which is where I'm from. And we had groups about this size. This was pretty average. In Fakatani, we had an enormous group. We had about 60 people and the same down in Otautahi. So lots and lots of interest in this kaupapa. Uh, and this was a, um, a, 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 this was in Fakatane, and this was Oliver providing after the, the focus groups interview, where we sort of uh, uh, explored and asked questions and asked partai of the, of the uh, kaumatua, they had questions to ask of us. And so Oliver provided a feedback session at the end of each um, uh, hui that we attended. So um, some of the main points I just wanted to go through, generally uh, the Komatua, not generally, but overwhelmingly did not like the word dementia or Alzheimer's. And of course, we all know there's a lot of stigmatization associated with that. So um, by and large, uh, the, 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 the name or the words that were most frequently used uh, across the the different iwi was uh, the term mate wareware. Of course, many of you already know mate means, to, in this context anyway, means to be sick or unwell. And wareware means to be forgotten so or, or to forget. Um, another aspect that came out of the corridor that really jumped out to us is that is uh, wairua is the most important aspect of their health and well-being. And I heard many kaumatu say, um, you know, I go to the doctor, go to the GP, and they ask me all these questions about this, that, my meds and everything else, but they don't ask about my way to about, you know, what, which is actually more important and more, more importantly, more uh, a part of their health and well-being uh, than, than the medical types of questions that were being asked to them. So uh, they wanted to be asked about their way to Um <clears throat> There generally is a lack of information about mate wari right, right across the mutu for Māori, uh, and that is even worse. The situation is even worse for those whānau who live in isolated uh, country areas uh, that des definitely needs addressing. And um, <clears throat> a lot of the kaumata have said that they wanted to, you know, uh, have a, a model, which is what actually... Uh, has been part of what prompted Oliver's work about um, dementia or mate wari wari from a Māori perspective. So they were just some of the, the main um, uh, themes or ideas or feelings or thoughts that came out of the, the data once we looked at it. Um, and, and that's the paper that, oh, I've gone back. That's the paper that, um, that Oliver has already mentioned and um, you can take a screen print of that as well, a screenshot of that as well, if you wish. Um, it's quite interesting reading. Um, so <clears throat> we come to the actual mana tool. So it's been quite a journey. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, we were interrupted by um, the COVID, uh, the onset of COVID. Uh, so we have been, we've had quite a number of setbacks. And of course, you know, this is a very vulnerable population. And so um, a lot of our uh, hui were put on hold. Um, so we've been going for a number of years now. We actually started late 2016, but we are all, you know, we, we are there. We're at the end of the journey now. Now, <clears throat> you, I mentioned in a previous 
uh, slide how wider was important to uh, to our Kaumatua. That's what they want to be asked about more than anything, in fact. So what we decided, what was, was decided um, with consultation, as I've said, is that we would have, like, unlike any other diagnostic tool in the world, we would have a wairua component as well as a functional component and a cognitive component. And I'll show you a few examples of the questions that are asked in those and those different components. So the wairua component, the, the assessment uh, process starts off with a wairua component and, and, and uh, as you can, uh, is obvious, it's, it's part of rapport building. And, but more importantly, it, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's an opportunity for uh, the kaumatua to develop some sort of trust within, with the clinician. Um, I was asked beforehand, by the way, who was this primarily for? So we had to, and that was something we put gave a lot of thought to. So most of the uh, clinicians who do diagnose uh, mate wari wari in New Zealand are not Māori. So we had to take that into consideration. We had to make it a tool that was some uh, that was um, one that the, the clinicians would actually use. Um, so we had to, what we did was we had to think about walking down the middle pathway, if you like, between Mataronga Māori and Western knowledge um, for that reason, because we want the clinicians to use it, but we need them to have faith in it. We need them to have confidence in the tool. Um, <clears throat> one of the, uh, one of the things that we've done in the tool is that we've provided um, a phonetic spelling of the kupu, the Māori kupu that we have included. Um, and I, yeah, just to help, you know, because some of us can get, or some of our kaumato can be quite offended when they hear our kupu being, you know, tragically pronounced uh, quite badly. So um, <clears throat> we've done that. That's just one of the small um, things that we've done. We've included um, Māori content uh, where we can. We are also very, we were also very aware and very um, keen. Obviously, we were not, not keen, not the word. We were very alert to the fact that we had to be asking questions that actually arrive at a diagnosis of mate wari wari. So we had to get the medical advice, but contextualize it, if you like, as much as we could within um, within uh, a Maori uh, within Tel Maori. Um, so here's the way to. Um, uh, co component. We'll do the next slide. So here are some of the questions we asked regarding the uh, uh, within the wider component, and um, they're based on some of the um, those components that um, Oliver spoke about: wahi, fano, fanoinga tanga, um, tupuna, and identity roles. And so that's what we consider to be important in terms of one's wairua. Where is the place that you feel most connected to? Where is the place you most want, want to live? Do you have enough of your own space where you, where you live? Um, what things do you do to help you feel at peace? Um, and is wairua important to you? Uh, other questions, how are you? I can't quite see that one up the top myself. Um, Anyway, let's go to question eight. Have your roles in your whānau or your whare or your community changed? Um, if you feel hoha, how do you manage this? You know, I've um, I've been administering neuropsych tests for mainly people with traumatic brain injury for about 20 odd years. And and then we did a study all oh, about 15 years ago and we we just changed some of the words within the test and we can put Māori kupu in there. And the response from the Māori um, sample, the Māori participants within that study was overwhelming. They loved the idea. They loved the fact that there were Māori kupu in there. It made them like, yeah, this is about me, you know. We, this is, a, this, I belong to this. This is, um, it's not something that's foreign in Pākehā that they, you know, kind of feel uh, quite removed from. So even just having... Uh, Māori kupu in there certainly uh, I think it will make a huge difference one of the the other thing I did want to mention is of course we want to produce a tool that is that accurately detects mate wari wari but the other mo very important aspect of this whole thing was that we wanted to take away the trauma of what our whanau go through when they are being assessed and that came through a lot from the stories that we heard from the Kaumatua. 
we wanted to make it a more as you know given the circumstances given the condition and given the pos the, the possibility of a positive diagnosis if you like we we wanted to make the journey or the assessment process anyway as um as as pleasant if you like for maori whanau and so um and hence the reason why you know we have the wairua component and we've just tried to make it as friendly if you like as possible which i think is important because that means you're going to get good engagement for the Fano and the person that you're interviewing. So, um, okay, we'll just move to the next one. <clears throat> the functional tool, I'm just going, going to give you a few examples of the um, different components. The functional um, component is, is given to the Fano to um, complete. Um, this is not the final version of it. We are still um, really just working on the formatting of it. So in the in the in the wider component, there are eleven questions. In the final functional component, it will there will be about I think about twenty questions in the end. And these questions have all been um, so that um, what we did was we looked at the the, t the tools that are currently uh, utilised to uh, evaluate functional uh, ability. Uh, in New Zealand uh, at the moment, and here's a list of them here, and I'm sure many of you health workers are familiar with these tools. So we use these tools. We had a look at the, we had a look at each one of the tools. We kind of weighted the domains, and um, the domains that had the most weighting those were the, those were the areas that we focused on. Um, so the functional tool, um, we uh, looking at anxiety, apathy, social awareness, disinhibition. Um, personal care, anger, mood, sleep, hallucinations and delusions. And those are the areas that we are asking questions about and, um, and the uh, uh, activities of daily living were included, you know, financial uh, schools. Um, the cognitive assessment, um, it's um, just about there. This has been probably the most tricky. Uh, so this is obviously the one that we uh, administer, the, the component, that, component that we administer to the, the person who may or may or who's been assessed for Mati Wari Wari. Um, at this stage, uh, there are 18 questions, which is quite long, but we are going to be cutting it, shaving it back to probably um, 14 to 15 questions. Um, and once again, we drew on the, so a lot of the study, one of the prompts or one of the um, events, if you like, that triggered uh, us doing the Manitou was the fact that the, that the Australians had developed the cognitive indigenous, I mean, the Kimberley indigenous cognitive assessment tool in Australia for Aboriginal people. And so we've sort of taken the lead from them and we actually went over there and consulted with them about you know what their processes and so we have built on that to some degree um uh we've also looked at the frontal the fab the camcog the uh, modified mini state mini mental state exam the mock of the ace3 and the rudas those are the those are the tools that we looked at in terms of um what's commonly used in aotearoa for cognitive assessment and, and these are the domains that we looked at and focused on and once again weighted. Um, and that's what those are the tools, uh, those are the domains that we are, are um, evaluating in, in the MANA tool. I just need to go back there because, so I'll just give you just a couple of the examples. And I was talking about making it Māori friendly. Um, Māori familiar. We want the content to be familiar. We want the, we want our, Whānau to feel like this is about them, you know. So, so in picture naming, which is one of you, as many of you know, is one of the um, one of the abilities that is lost in the early stages and in Mate Ware Ware, we have asked them to identify these types of um, these uh, items. Um, and what we've also included as alternative scoring um, items. So, for example. For the first one, we could have uh, a, a, a whare nui, a whare tangata, a whare tūpuna, uh, a marae, whatever. There's a whole range of acceptable alternative scorings that, that um, you know, th that uh, where, the, where the patient uh, is correct. And this came on the back of the, the WACE uh, scoring criteria where 
um, in a study back early in in 1993, I think it was, the 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 guys who the Maori guys who were made up the sample of that study were uh, answering questions like, for example, what does um, does domestic mean? And those some of those guys were saying, well, that's a that's a fight with the missus. That's an argument with the missus. And of course, that's not in the scoring criteria. So they got marked wrong. But of course, actually, in their world, they're not wrong. They're right. So they should have been marked right. So we've made sure that all the alternative, you know, question uh, answers that might come up are going to be included. So in the second one, you, kuni kuni, huaka, pig, however, not dinner, um, and so on. Uh, so <clears throat> here's another another example, um, an att attention, the attention task. And so we've asked them to um, spell the word kai backwards. And um, if the person can spell, um, sorry, if the, uh, yeah, ask, ask them if they want, if they can spell the word kai. If they can't spell the word kai, there is a strong suspicion that that person may not have had education and education because so, some of our as you know some of our komato have had very little formal uh, education so they may not know how to spell uh, that doesn't mean that's not necessary or, and that's not indicative of their uh, of their cognitive ability so that question was put in there to rule out um, people who have not had uh, education, uh, formal education, which was one of the biases uh, that uh, exists in the, in the, um, in the uh, mainstream uh, questionnaires that are asked. Um, if they can spell the word Kai backwards, then, um, then we carry on and with that particular task and ask them to spell the word Hongi backwards. And so that's, a, that's okay. If they, right back to the beginning, if they can't spell the word Kai, then you the, the administrator would automatically revert to 12B, which is a digit, digits backward task and uh, deemed to be easier to read or to say words, recall words, or read words ba backward rather than uh, spelling backward. So that's what we've done in order to try and get around that difficulty, that problem. Um, so a lot of controversy around the visual spatial drawing. We do have, at this stage, we have this, which is, um, as you know, a kuru. It's quite, um, people do find it difficult, um, but it, is, it has got some discrimination traits to it. So we are having discussions at the moment. Now, there is also the um, intertwining um, circles, uh, which is another visual spatial drawing task that is part of the test, and or the infinity loops, as some people call it. And there's also the queue, which some of you will be familiar with. We are thinking of keeping them all in at the stage. Uh, we don't want to get rid of the kuru, although at first it seems difficult. Uh, but for for cultural purposes, we really do want to keep something in there that that obviously um, arises or comes from Te Ao Māori. So, at the moment, we are we are considering to uh, uh, considering keeping it in. Um, there's also, uh, and so Oliver has put the history taking together. Um, component so really together with the history taking and uh with a uh, medical examination and perhaps some other supplement supplementary um assessments uh, this could be a gold standard the mana could be part of a gold standard um assessment uh, the question that was asked could this be for bicultural people for of course all maori are bicultural um so but if a person is, for example, Māori and Pacifica, um, the, this, this particular, the Māori tool has been tested on anybody who identifies as Māori. We didn't take into consideration, we haven't recorded what other, uh, you know, ethnic groups that that person might, uh, might um, belong to. However, um, I just want you to know that the Pacifica, um, some of my Pacifica colleagues at the University of Auckland are gearing up to prepare and to, uh, to develop and devise a, a tool appropriate for the Pacific population as well. But I would imagine, um, so we are going to be 
uh, looking at how we're going to launch it, how it's going to be rolled out. And I would think that the corridor would be that the patient would have an option of whether or not they wanted to, um, you know, to have this tool use with them. Um, so um, in terms of the validation of the MANA tool, we have validated it on 89. And, and, and that's not too bad, actually, when it, in terms of neuropsychological tests. Um, the Kika, which has been proven to be very successful in Australia, was validated on 75 people. So pretty, pretty happy about that. Um, 31 of our participants came out of the memory clinic. Uh, at Middlemore and um, the others out of Rotorua and, and as well as the Rotorua Hospital and Queen Elizabeth Health in Rotorua as well. And then we recruited um, 58 uh, at random from, from the community. So 33 had dementia, 12 with MCI and um, 42 with no dementia, which is, which is a pretty good balance. So the memory clinic participants, they were administered the Manitou because they already had their gold standard assessment. And the community participants who we brought into the study uh, underwent a psychiatrist assessment by our psychiatrist. And then a week or two later at the most, they were administered the Manitou. Um, and then of course, we've compared the, the results of all the outcomes of those um, of those assessments. Um, this is just one slide just for on the cognitive tool. Um, we will obviously be publish, publishing uh, all the, um, you know, the uh, data analysis on the tool. But as you can see, the dementia that those with um, uh, in blue, um, generally overall, it's, it's a good fit. It, the cognitive tool, we're happy with the outcomes. Um, maybe, you know, and what we're going to, all we need to do is that we need to um, work on cutoff scores at this point, point in time. But generally, it does discriminate people with uh, non dementia as opposed to pe people with dementia. And Kopatu Tine Kurido Ngamahi, I have no idea what time my time frame is. Kia ora, um, Makarena, thank you. I'm going to hand over to um, Susan, who's going to um, facilitate the questions. Kia ora. Kia ora. Just have a look to see again if um, people are happy to put their question in the chat. Uh, jo O'Neill, would you like to ask your question? Yora Makarena, um, wonderful presentation, thank you. I, I was just wondering, coming from the aged care sector, the documentation is absolutely wonderful and we've been wondering how to really um, integrate Tereo and uh, imagery into some of the documents that we use. So how, how do we get access to them so that we can start to look at how we can really learn from those documents? Oh, you mean from the, how can you access the money tool? Yes. You, you, no, you, well, you can't at the moment, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> unfortunately. Um, we are planning with, um, through the, um, Mati, the Dementia Mati Wari Wari, uh Leadership and Advisory Group, we are planning on launching the money tool in August. And so uh, then it'll go public. Uh, then you will have easy, easy have, easily have access to it. You'll be able to download it easily but we we will you know we will um let you know uh, oh, uh, thank you so much much appreciated thank you thank you Ora. um annette rotherham would you like to ask your question oh um kia ora. um thank you very much i really um thought that was a wonderful presentation Nakarina. um i'm actually in the process of developing a uh, patient reported outcome measure for conversation and aphasia and I right. have um, yeah I, I can I know I know the process you're going through to to look at other tools and see how we can make them more appropriate for our, the people we're working with do you think the cultural validation process because as as a clinician and as a speech therapist we have so many tools that have never been tested on Aotearoa population and particularly not cultural validation 
do you think there is a process that we should pursue to to make the, the tools we're using more appropriate? Yeah, I mean, what what we've what I've done what I've done in the past is we've got, for example, the the ten sixty six uh, diagnostic tool. Um, what we've done is, um, and we, we're going to be using it in the prevalence study, which we're about to start. What we've done is I've we've brought together groups of komatua generally, but others as well, uh, people working in you know Maori working it out there in the in the field, bringing them together, working through it. Um, systematically to mm -hmm. you know to 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 bring a, a cultural perspective to it a Maori cultural perspective to it and just getting consensus around the table and then yeah. maybe you know going away and making those changes and then following up going back mm -hmm. to another group and that sort of iterative, iterative process of getting consensus amongst Maori that's what I've done on you know quite a number of uh, tools that we've looked at modifying no, great thought, Prathis. Um, yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Kia and Roslyn. Kia ora. I, I was just asking questions like, who's going to administer the tool? Is it just yeah. primarily around the psychiatrists and that, especially with the lack of them anywhere in the world? So, no, I mean, any health health professional would be will be able to administer it i think you know um so for a you know for a um a gold standard diagnosis i it would have to be an association in, in collab or not collaboration but alongside other tools as well to get that gold standard diagnosis but no we're going to make it um so that anybody nurses um you know anybody really can use it, well anybody within the health field can use it and what we do what we're working on eventually is that we want to develop a bedside tool very much along the lines of the mini ace uh in terms of length and we're looking at calling that the mana iti but that's just and that should that should follow on quite quickly as well thank you but thank no you. yeah yeah any health work and would we able to um administer it thank you you order now, I know that people would probably love Makarina to have you settle in for the rest of the day, but I know that we, we are also going to hear from uh, Sally and her team, but I'm just going to ask the group, one of the things that the Dementia Leadership and Advisory Group have asked us to do is to, as part of the gathering of support for the mana to make it, help make it make as much of an impact as we can is to actually gather the endorsement of the network so that we can send our, our araha and our respect for this work that has been done and so we are going to try doing this by putting up a little poll so that we have something formal that says that we as a network um, are giving our our support to this work so if Bevan can you put up our poll for us this is just a we were kind of thinking of yeah, a, it's, it's, a, a way of raising hands or <laughs> yeah it's already up and some people have quite a lot of people have already answered which is great can i, can I am i allowed to say one make one more comment absolutely uh, so like um so this is the first draft or the first version if you like it may not be the last we can we may build on it as i've done with the kika in australia and refine it make it make it uh, refine it to make it even more uh you know more of an accurate tool for our people so yeah that's what i wanted to say 